In today's video, we investigate why the engine layout in Clarkson Hammond and May's favourite car no longer exists. It feels amazing to have this Mondeo back in my life. It's been over two years, but now I've got it back home and I'm loving putting miles back on it again. The thing is, driving it around, I've realised that I'm driving a car from a bygone era. Cars of this format do not exist anymore. What makes the Ford Mondeo ST200 so special is this, the 2.5 litre Duratec V6, an engine designed by Porsche, honed by Ford and then used to power this now incredibly rare performance saloon. V6 saloon cars still exist, stuff like the Alfa Giulia, Mercs, but this Mondeo is a specific species that is now dead the front-wheel drive transverse V6 performance car. They used to be prolific in the 1990s and early 2000s, but now they're gone. So, let's talk about the pros of this layout that allowed these cars to exist and the cons that led to their downfall. Engines can be mounted two ways in a car. They can either be longitudinal or transverse. A longitudinal engine is mounted this way, with the front of the engine here, the back of the engine there, onto a gearbox. So it's mounted in the direction of travel of the car. That's generally used in a rear wheel drive setup. A transverse engine like this one is mounted what you could say is sideways, perpendicular to the direction of travel. A car with a transverse engine is generally front-wheel drive, although through the use of a transfer box, it can be made to be four-wheel drive. So, in here, we've got a transverse V6, which is attached to a transaxle. That's essentially a gearbox and a differential combined into one. Then you have a drive shaft coming off either side to power the front wheels. Now, what's really cool about the Mondeo is if you lift it up onto a ramp, you can see the channels engineered into the chassis to make it four-wheel drive. A four-wheel drive Mondeo is an absolute unicorn, so if you find one, buy it. Thank you guys for watching today's video. We really appreciate the support. Another thing that supports the channel is our group of sponsors. And we've got a new one joining the channel. It's 70 Mai with our new dash cam Omni. This nifty piece of kit is for dash cam users who pursue better experiences of surveillance and other smart functionalities. Along with doing all the usual dash cam things, it has 360 degree view with a 340 degree swivel design with a 140 degree field of view. Omni can also minimize the image distortion under the 360 degree view. This camera uses AI motion detection coupled with best in class night vision to maximize surveillance capability. That surveillance also lasts for the full 24 hours of the day using time-lapse recording. The use of AI is pretty special, as it intelligently detects road accidents and directs the recording towards that direction, as well as capturing any suspiciousness around your vehicle when parked, giving out a warning light to keep people away from your pride and joy. It's also capable of capturing in 60 frames per second, effectively getting rid of motion blur so that you can clearly make out the registration of passing cars that could be about to cause you trouble. The Omni records in 1080p Full HD, and if a car crash happens, it captures crystal clear emergency footage from just five seconds prior to, during, and 10 seconds after it happens. It also features a voice control, allowing you to operate the camera while driving. Shoot left. If you fancy having a go with one of these dash cams, then click the link in the description below and help protect your beloved car. So, transverse V6s then. 20 years ago, the family of transverse V6 engine cars was huge and really diverse. There was the Mondeo, the Ford Cougar, VW put their VR6 in pretty much anything. 
There was another car from my past, the MG ZT Rover 75, the MG ZS Rover 45, the really handsome Renault Safran. The list was almost endless. The best use of the Transverse V6 though has to go to Alfa Romeo with its stunning 3 litre and 3.2 litre Busso V6 engines. There was the GTV, pretty much anything with a GTA badge, they were all achingly cool. Why did the Transverse V6 become so popular then? Well, car makers were looking to create a top spec of their mundane platforms, like the Mondeo. So they created a hierarchy. The low to mid spec cars would have a four cylinder and they'd keep a V6 for that top spec. Most of these mundane platforms were cab forward designs to maximize interior space. So the decision was made to mount the V6s transversely so that you didn't have a big nasty transmission tunnel running through the car and ruining all of the space. And in that, they had their top spec, a front wheel drive car with a V6 crammed in the front there so that they could justify that premium price. It then became an exercise in packaging for the engineers involved, as they had to fit a 60 degree V6 and all of its ancillaries into an engine bay that was predominantly designed for a much smaller powertrain. Now, these V6 engines were heavy, but all of that weight was over the front wheels, which aided traction under power. And without all that rear wheel drive gubbins at the back, overall, it saved weight. This Duratec V6 also has a variable intake track, so once you get it above 4,500 RPM, you get this lovely pickup from the engine, and that connection to the Aston DB9's V12 starts to course through the car. Power was between 200 to 250 horsepower on average, but what made these cars so special is that they all sounded a bit like this. So, these V6s sounded great, had decent power, they fitted, just, and they allowed car makers to establish that top spec and ask for that premium price. Why did they disappear then? Well, the main cause was this. These V6s were fairly high capacity and naturally aspirated, and they created their power either using a variable intake track like this or variable valve timing. But then the turbo became mainstream and totally blew everything open. Now, a car manufacturer just needed one engine layout and could simply turn up or turn down the turbo boost to create their different power levels and therefore create their different spec levels. There was no need to cram a V6 in there with all of its ancillaries. You just needed your four cylinder turbo with some additional plumbing and you were good to go. It was much easier to install and much, much cheaper to mass produce. Also, these V6s are anything but frugal. I'm happy if I get in the mid 20s with this, but a four-cylinder turbo can easily get up into the 30s, even the 40s. The Duratec V6 lasted one more generation of Mondeo through the ST220, but after that, all of the top-spec Mondeos were four-cylinder turbos. Dynamically, the move away from V6s will have helped too. These cars are naturally front heavy, so taking away a couple of cylinders will only help how this car goes around corners. That's not to say that this car handles badly, in fact, it feels amazing out here. I think the Mondeo chassis is one of the best front wheel drive chassis ever made. It just feels right. In Europe, the Transverse V6 is gone, unless you count the Lotus Amira, but that's a rear mid-engine sports car, so it's not really in the same context as this. There are a couple of stragglers still in the United States, but let's face it, the front-wheel drive Transverse V6 car is gone. The only mainstream cars that you could say still have high cylinder counts and are transversely mounted are the RS3 and TTRS from Audi with their transverse five cylinder, but even they are barely hanging on to that engine. In terms of the only two cars that Clarkson, Hammond and May all love, the Mondeo is as dead as a dodo on a Dutchman's spit in Mauritius. 
The Subaru Legacy Outback is still around, and it still has a flat 4 engine. Fair play Subaru, keep it going for as long as you can. That makes this a rare car in 2023, so if I was you, I'd be looking for one before they get silly. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. I'd be Mike, and don't forget to subscribe to Drive Tribe.